Ken Terrier Fergus has been rushed into the Bondi Clinic by owner Catherine and 12-year-old son Chris. All right, so just explain what's happened. He jumped out of the car with his sister and he caught his foot and I think his nail's all sticking out and... And he, did he yell out in pain when he landed? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, he screamed. His foot's all turned inwards, the nail's off, it's bleeding and he can't put his foot down. He's obviously caught it at a strange angle. It's, uh... It is quite dramatic. If you touch it at all, he was screaming. Yeah. But then he also puts on a performance at the best of times. Ken Terriers, they're a Scottish breed. They're supposed to be really clever, but um, Fergus is the brightest dog. He's a real baby. So, I mean, looking at the two, you know, it's, it's easy to see the difference. It's the normal one there. It's facing straight ahead, whereas this one is off at the wrong angle. And he's trembling a bit. Yeah, he is. I've seen a lot of dogs in pain, and to me, Fergus is one of those dogs. And when you look at his toe, there's no doubt it's bent at a strange angle. I don't believe this is a performance. I think this is the real deal. The big challenge is working out whether, when he's jumped out of the car, whether he's actually twisted that toe, the entire mm -hmm. toe, and broken it and dislocated it or whether it's just the nail that's ripped away from its base and, yeah. and twisted around. The only way to know for sure is with an X-ray. What I'm concerned about here is that Fergus may very well have fractured either his toe or his entire foot. If he's done that, he has every right to be showing signs of pain. My mate Jason's called from Hunter Valley Zoo. He's asked me to come up because he needs some help with sheep. What could he need help with sheep for? But one thing's for sure, whenever Jace calls, it's always interesting, and I'm betting today will be no different. Tim Faulkner is taking time out from his role as general manager at the Australian Reptile Park and is heading north into the Hunter Valley, where zoo owner Jason and his team are ready to get going. Morning, boys. Morning, Timmy. How are you, mate? Good. Come on in, mate. I've got a challenge for you. Boys are already down at the yard. Where's my cup of tea? I turn up and it's straight into it. How are you, mate? Good. Here to help. Oh, why so many people for sheep? We're called Barbary sheep. Where are they? Over in the, in the far corner. They're already onto us. Great. Barbary sheep. Now it all makes sense. You can always rely on Jace to come up with a doozy like this. Look at the horns. Especially that big boy, he's about 90 kilos. That explains why there's so many people. Yep. We've got a bit of an outside the box job for Tim today. We've got to catch our barber ship. The big guy needs his hoofs trimmed and just the regular vaccination and worming and stuff like that. And one of our females hurt her eye a few weeks ago, so she needed a patch put on it. So we've got to actually have a squeeze under that patch and see how the eye's travelling. So we probably need to have a couple here. Use the dam as our divider. So we'll leave three on this side and take three around that side. Yep. The plan is for the team to fan out and herd the sheep into a holding pen, where the procedures can be carried out safely. OK. So we'll just push them nice and gentle. Oh, they're on to us, mate. Barbary sheep are native to the mountain regions of North Africa. All right, try and keep them moving, guys. Cut them off, cut them off. Oh, these are hard, aren't they? Barbary sheep are really dangerous. They've got a massive set of horns, know how to use them. If you're in front of them, they won't stop. They'll just plough straight out of the top of you. Move up, boys. Here we go. Another big swoop. We'll go right around. Bring it around to you guys. Come up, Shane, Rodney. Try and push them around now. Come on. It's up to us now, mate. Here we go. Come on. It's obvious this is not working. I hope Jace has got another plan. You know, most super stupid. These guys are switched on. Switched they know on. the drill. So, what do you do? It's time to bring out the big guns. I'm already here. I mean the real big guns. Yeah? What's yeah. that? I'll show you. Right Go on. have a look. I'm just not 
I'm sure if it's just a, a nail that's been torn off, yeah. or whether we've got a dislocation or a break of that toe. It's off at a strange angle, and that nail is bent around 90 degrees from where it should be. An X-ray is the only way to confirm whether the young Cairn Terrier has fractured his foot. X-ray. Okay, so toe that we're worried about is this top one here. And it is deviated. All the other toes are coming down and, and out. This one's popping up. And you put that with this shot here where it's deviated at the side and there's definitely a problem around that joint there. Fergus is no drama queen. He's not only ruptured the entire nail off its bed, but he's torn the ligaments in his toe, causing what is a pretty serious displacement. So, let's see how Catherine handles the news. About Fergus. Mm -hmm. We found the problem. Yeah. Um, it's actually potentially a little bit more than we thought originally. So, it looks like he's torn ligaments in his toe as he's landed. Only my dog could do that. <laughs> so, all right. It, well, he's, I've got to say, he's not being dramatic out there at all. He's actually, it's, I think the moment's really hit him. Mm -hmm. He's been quite quiet. By tearing the ligaments, the toe's deviated off to one side and mm -hmm. has also lifted up a little bit as well. Okay. So, what we can do is actually strap up that foot, and that's going to really act like its own little splint. And provided we, we trim that nail off, he should actually be right to, to go home tonight. Excellent. Only Fergus could hurt himself jumping out the car. You know, it's, it's just typical Fergus. He's quite accident prone. All right, we'll see you in a second. Brilliant, thanks. Yeah, thanks. What do you got? We're going to bring out the big guns, I said. Whoa. Get a load of this puppy. What is that? It's called a net gun. At the Hunter Valley Zoo, Tim is helping round up Barbary sheep that are in need of a health check. We've done a couple of laps around the yard and so far it's not going to plan. They know what the, the holding pen means and they just don't want to go in there. So now it's time for plan B. So it shoots out a four by four metre net. Yeah, I can guess that by the name of it. And so how close can you get? You've got to get within 15 or 20 metres. But as soon as this net lands over the head, you've got to get there as fast as you can. Get a hold of the horns, a deadly bit, get the net off the animal, Get it up to the yards and we can process it from there. I don't know, mate. Well, I'm no Usain Bolt, but... All right, give it a crack. Best. I'll give it a crack. All right, well, the big guy running that, yeah, I'm sure you will be. Yeah, All right, OK. let's get into it. Well, the gun's a great idea, but the sheep still has horns. It's still 90 kilos. It's still running very fast. And once the net's over it, we've still got to get into the sheep and restrain it. I'd like to think it goes as smoothly as it sounds. So keep moving. Whoop. Close. So firing the net gun is all about teamwork. So the barbers shoot a flying pasture. They're going at Mach 10. So the idea is to pull the trigger at the right moment, get the net to land perfectly over, do a nice wrap, then it's up to the other guys to run in and really get the animal quick. Righto. Ooh, another miss. Jason needs to pick up his act. All right, try and keep it moving, guys. Got him? Yep, I've got him. Big male presents himself. Bam, perfect shot. Straight over his head, wraps him up, and in come the guys. He's a powerful animal. Good shot, mate. Thanks, mate. All right, we've got to get him untangled now. It's a tricky bit. Finally, we got him, the big boy. It's all hands on deck. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, he's got some kick. As the net comes off, it has to be peeled from the back all the way up and then over the horns. Now, as that's happening, he feels a lot freer. Right, we've got one. That's when he gives a kick. Three feet out. Back. Whoop. Timmy, can you jump on another leg, please, mate? Right. Lift yep. his leg up. Yep. Get and the front. front Drag it forward. Forward? Yep. Yep, free. Are we free? Yep. All right, guys, now we're going to do the business then. He builds up like a reptile. Yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yep. Just coming this way. Yeah. Here we go. All right, I'll take that with you, mate. Peel it off. Now we've caught him. That part's done and done well but we've got to walk him all the way up to the yard and get him inside to be able to process him. One slip at this moment, he'll feel a bit of freedom and he'll bolt. Easy fella. Good boy.
boy, Fergus. At the Bondi Clinic, Chris is about to begin treatment on Fergus's badly injured foot. The Cairn Terrier hurt it when he leapt from a four-wheel drive. With the nail bed now thoroughly cleaned and any bacteria removed, it's time for some extra thick bandaging. This is one of those situations where the more padding you put into this dressing, the better, because with that extra padding comes extra strength. One final wrap, and it's looking pretty firm. OK. So, Fergus, you're right to wake up. Whenever you're ready. There's no doubt it's been the toughest of tough days for Fergus. Eventually that nail will grow back, but in the meantime, what he needs is just to sleep off that sedation, and then he can go back to his mum. So now he's free, guys. Let go, Daniel. Boys can lead him on. Yep. Jeez. God, he's strong. He's strong, isn't he? At the Hunter Valley Zoo, Tim is helping staff lead an extremely stubborn sheep up into the yards. Easy, fella. All right, here I was going to run ahead and get everything ready for him. OK. So the danger now is he's going to use those really large horns and his powerful build to lever us around, push the boys around. And if you get in the wrong spot, he can hook you with those, those big horns and he'll do you some serious damage. You are right out there, guys? <laughs> whoop, 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 whoop. He wants to go forward whoop, now. Whoop. He's on me. You going in shade there, Jase? Yeah, mate, yeah. Now we've got him in the yard, we need to give him a vaccination, a drenching, and trim the hooves. Once we've done that, we can put him into a holding yard. Ready? One squirt. Done. Beautiful, mate. Thank you. Beauty. Now the team needs to address the overgrown hooves. All right, Rodney is our head hoof trimmer. So what I might get you to do, Timmy, is to hold the legs up. I'll take over from Rodney. Yep. And I'll slip in there behind you guys. One at a time, or hold One at a time, mate. Yeah, we'll just... Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Rodney and I let go for one second, and he's off. Boom, right into Jace. You all right? Yeah, good. <laughs> so we're swapping over. I'm taking over Rodney's spot on the front of the sheep, because he's going to do all the hoof trimming. And bam, drives me straight up the yards. We really took the wind out of me. OK, right good on you. As Jason catches his breath, Tim and Rodney yeah. get on with the hoof trim. So they're a bit long, hey? Uh, so you just trim those up? Just trim them up so they're flat on the bottom of that foot. In their natural environment, the sheep's hooves would wear down on rocky surfaces. Good. Two done. Next foot. But on the soft Hunter Valley turf, they become overgrown. OK, last foot. Doesn't hurt him at all, eh? He's just in... No, like just like your fingernails or your toenails. Looking good. There we go. Done. All right, Timmy, you right to get in there, mate? Yep. All right, eh? Spin right. around to your left. I'm going to open the door. Watch it. Oh, oh, it's off. <laughs> One slip at this moment. He'll feel a bit of freedom and he'll bowl. One, two, two three, there he goes. Okay, okay. Well done, everyone. Well How done, good boys. was that? How well was well that? Well done. How strong is he? Jeez. It's a bit out of the comfort zone, isn't it? A bit different to the venomous snake. Give me so. a dance with a venomous snake any day. Yeah. So one down. Another one to go. OK. Yep. All right, let's go. Has it all been an awful dream? Want to go home? Later that afternoon at the Bondi Clinic, Fergus, who injured his foot jumping from a four-wheel drive, has slept off his sedation. OK, let's go. And is ready to be reunited with his mum. It's time to get Fergus back to Catherine. Now, all along, she's been insisting that Fergus has been banging it on. So now we know the truth is that he's tougher than anyone expected. I'm keen to see if, well, if she's going to take it all back. <laughs> so there he is. There he is. He's got something to show you too, which he's very keen for you to see. Oh, there you go. So he's a bit dopey, isn't he? He is, yeah. So that, that's, that's a combination of just some of the sedation that hasn't quite worn off, but also some of the pain relief. It's not a problem. Really painful injury. <laughs> Mind you, it hurts if you rip your fingernail off, so yeah. I guess he's done a bit more than that. Get the impression that he might just get the sofa tonight, oh, am I right? He always gets the sofa. I, do. <laughs> I think it's safe to say that Fergus has surprised a lot of people today, not the least of which is Catherine. But let's hope that his dramas stay in the past. Cool, All thank right. you. Thank you, guys.
I'll see you later. Cheers. See you, Fergus. At the Hunter Valley Zoo, Tim is helping round up Barbary's sheep. Make a change direction, she'll step in it. With the big male safely out of harm's way in the holding yard, it's now time to catch the feisty female. There we go. Ah, oh, nice job, Abs. You were in there, bud. Hey, body on the line. Sorta of got her, but it's off. We need to go again. Oh, close. Very close. After another shot off target, right up. it's third time lucky. Now it's up to all of us to get in there and get us safely up to the holding area. Right. Yep. What a catch. Once the female is successfully moved to the holding pen, the team can get to work. She needs the same treatments as the male had, but she's had an old injury to the eye that's had a patch over it. So the patch needs to come off, assess the eye, and see if it needs more treatment. A little bit of an ulcer on the eye there, but it's not bleeding, it's a lot better than what it was, so I reckon we're gonna leave it off to heal. We'll catch you again in another couple of weeks just to keep an eye on her in the paddock. So it was worse than that, the patch is, yeah. let, it, let it calm down, yep, it's, not it's, down no, it's not irritated. No, it's not irritated. Now it needs some sunlight and fresh yep. air. Yep. Eyes looking great. If we haven't got to repatch it again, it can now just do the rest of its healing by itself. Next one. After administering drench and vaccinations, it's good. Back. Tim's now checking her hooves. How are the hoofs, Timmy? Uh, the front two were good. Okay. A little bit on the back, not bad, but. He's had a bit of a rough trot with that bad eye, so I'm glad there's nothing else wrong with her. Done. Alrighty. Okay. So what we'll do now is we'll put the female in with the male. We're gonna let them settle and just make sure they're right. In. Beauty. Well Ooh. done. How was that? Jeez, mate. I'm glad it's over. It went well, didn't it? The females in with the male. They need to settle for a few minutes. We get to take a breath and absorb in what's just happened, and then we'll release them. Oh, cool. What's the plan? Let them straight out. Yep. All right. I'm going to jump behind that gate. Yeah. He's going to come out of here like a ball of the gate. You ready? Coming. They were as quick taken off as they were to catch. Oh, weren't they? Straight out of there, as soon as they saw an open gate. Thank you, mate. Thanks, Ace, for coming up, mate. Nah, give you a cup of tea now after you had to run around, you've been a daily exercise. You reckon I've earned it? Yeah, you have. Hi, I'm here to see Chris. I've got a wallaby. Okay, great. I'm just going to take a seat and wait for behind you. No worries. Thank you. At the Bondi Clinic, Ben has travelled from the outskirts of Sydney with a very special patient. This is Hugo. He's a, a redneck wallaby. He's about four years old. Um, and he's from a, a wildlife sanctuary that I run out in Dural. Um, and we've just noticed in the last week or so that he's developed a really large lump, uh, tumour-looking growth in his ear. Um, so it's a bit concerning how big it is and how quickly it's come on. So we're keen to get it checked out by Chris and, and see what he thinks it might be. Hey, Norman. Come start with Chris. Thanks, mate. Bag's wriggling, huh? It is moving a bit, yeah. yeah. Pluff him up here. Yeah, that'd be great. So I'm just trying to keep the stress to a minimum because I'm sure he's probably realised this is a bit out of the ordinary. Yeah, my buddy. All right, big bag and big wallaby, huh? Definitely, yep. yeah. Yeah. All right. We might just try to get him out nice and gently. Come on, mate. That's Hugo, isn't it? Hugo's his name, yeah. He's a, a redneck wallaby. Okay. And about a week ago, week and a half ago, we noticed this big growth that had come up in his ear, so it seemed to have come up really quickly. Um, and it's very large, as you can see. It's big, I mean, and it's also really filling up the entirety of that, yeah. that ear canal there. And quite firm, too. The moment I look into that ear, it's very clear exactly why Ben's worried. There is a big lump in there, and it sounds like it's come up really quickly. So there are really two extremes. At either end of the scale, we have an abscess, which really isn't such a bad thing. We can treat with antibiotics and it should heal through to the other worst possible case scenario, which is a tumour. So he was bred in captivity and uh, when he reached sexual maturity, he started to get a little bit boisterous. So oh, really? I had to yeah, rehome him, so they gave me a call. Yep. So yeah, he came to us and we've had him for about eight months now. 
since he's been with you, has he been quite calm? Initially, it was, yeah, it was quite interesting to see how he reacted with the other roos. So he yeah. sort of came in and I think he's got a bit of small man syndrome, being the wallaby, and there was a few big red kangaroos twice his size around. Yeah. Um, and he had to sort of prove himself to them, but pretty quickly they, they put him in his place. So yeah. of all the roos we've got at the sanctuary, I think, yeah, Hugo's probably one that I've got the, the closest bond with. And I think that's got a lot to do with his really outgoing personality. He's just got a lot of character and he's always sort of jumping around and causing mischief around the sanctuary. Yeah, the challenge is if, if you have one lump, you just want to make sure you don't have two. Yeah. And so I'm going to great lengths to, to feel all over him there to make sure there's nothing else that mm -hmm. shouldn't be there. Okay, I'm pretty comfortable with not. What this clean bill of health for the rest of him means is that I can really now start to focus just on his ear. The logical thing is, is to try to get a needle in there and, and take a sample. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's at least going to start to narrow down the options in terms of what it could be. For sure. the Bondi Referral Hospital Sash, five-month-old Brian is in serious trouble. For besotted owners Ali and Matt, watching their beloved bulldog struggling to breathe is simply heartbreaking. Little Brian just can't get air into his lungs. It's, yeah. it's very hard to see. Even when he sleeps, he, he almost sleeps sitting down just so he can keep his, keep his head up because he just yeah. can't get air into his lungs. So that, that tears me and Ali apart I'm watching sure him just struggle, yeah. Yeah, struggling to breathe. It's pretty, pretty tough. But sadly, this has been a lifelong battle for the much-loved pup. He's been a patient at Sash since he was just a baby. When we first got Brian, we, I mean, we had him for three weeks and he seemed like just quite a normal puppy. And then after a little while, he started to really, really have trouble breathing. And, and then he got a bit of a cold and that's when we came to Sash um, and they said he had pneumonia. We were told that he didn't have a very good chance of surviving. You know, he was lucky to make it through. So we've been told to get him healthy again um, and bring him in here to fix his breathing troubles. Hello guys, how are you going? Hey Steve, how are you going? I'm Steve. Hi Matt, hi Ellie, how are you? Good. Hello Brian! Hello mate. He's a classy looking fella isn't he? Come on in, let's have a, let's have a look at him. Come on mate. Brian's had a pretty tough start in life. He saw us when he was a little puppy because he, uh, he got pneumonia. So, uh, and we identified then some problems with his upper airway, with the obstructive breathing and the narrow windpipe. So he's come back now to help correct some of the airflow problems in his upper airway. All right, Brian, let's have a look at you, my boy. So yeah. what does he do with his breathing? Uh, very, very, what would you call it? Raspy. Yeah, raspy. Yep. So he, you know, as soon as he gets his heart rate up, you can yep. just hear him struggling to breathe. Can you? Okay. Yeah, it's really, really, really hard to watch, actually. Yeah, well, he's got what is very common in these breeds. And unfortunately, what happens when you squash this nose in to make them what we call brachycephalic is that you basically concertina all of the structures in their nose and in the back of their throat. Yep. They're all pushed down. And one of the tr problems with that is right in here at the back of his throat, his soft palate gets elongated and that causes obstruction to their airflow. And the other thing that we know from his x-rays that we saw when he had an episode of pneumonia when he was a puppy is that his, his windpipe is quite narrow, so his trachea is quite narrow. And that makes his air, airflow dynamics, you know, even more compromised for this poor little guy. So he's got a couple um, of things. So he's got a couple of things. Unless something is done to help Brian, the much-loved bulldog risks suffering potentially life-threatening problems. Dogs like Brian, as they get older, they can develop what we call laryngeal collapse, which is where the whole opening to the airway actually closes down. And that can be a real problem. All right, well, what we really need to do with Brian is do an operation on the back of his throat, and that will allow us to trim some of those redundant tissues that are pushing into his throat and obstructing the airflow. Yeah, and that will really help him. Yeah, that's right. So he's only a young dog now, he's got a long life to live, yeah. and if we can help his airflow through the back of his throat, then that will improve his quality of life quite measurably. So. Excellent. But let's take him out the back and yeah. get a bed ready for him, and then you guys can say goodbye so he can get ready for his operation today. Okay. Alrighty. You ready? Come on, let's go. Hearing that he's got to have another surgery is pretty hard to handle. You know, he was in here only a couple of months ago and nearly died. Now he's back here getting surgery done again. So, yeah, we're, we're pretty nervous about it, but it needs to be done. It's a difficult goodbye for Matt and Ali, but they know surgery is the only option for Brian. See you, bud. See you, buddy. See you, mate. Hey, baby. 
If we leave Brian, the risk is, is that he will develop the, the worsened stages of laryngeal collapse as he gets older. We're trying to prevent that from happening. Thanks, guys. Come on. See ya. Bye. Breathing's already obstructed and he's only very young. The feeling is, is that over time that could get worse. That's going to mean the quality of his life and his ability to interact with the family is going to be hampered. And we want to avoid that at all costs. Come on, baby. Okay, so this is just to clean up the skin there. Mm -hmm. At the Bondi Clinic, Chris is about to investigate what's inside a disturbing growth on the ear of rednecked wallaby Hugo. So, I'm not sure if it's the right jab or the left hook I need to worry about, but let's just see how we go. After the initial shock of seeing the blood in the syringe, all of a sudden, everything begins to make sense. Hugo has blood in his ear, an oral hematoma. How do you get an oral hematoma? Well, if you're a wallaby, it's from fighting. What does Hugo have a reputation for doing? It's getting these out. And they've landed one on him. Okay. The thing is, we can't just leave a big blood clot like this in Hugo's ear. What happens over time is the fibrous tissue in the clot starts to tighten down like it does in a scab. When it does that, it really shrinks down all the tissue around it and really causes what is essentially a cauliflower ear. If that happens in Hugo's ear, it'll really render that ear useless for him and ultimately he could become deaf as a result. So this little brawler has suddenly had his personality catch up with him. <laughs> they put you in your place, mate. Yeah. So really what I think we need to do is to get in there and remove that blood clot. Now, I obviously can't do that with him awake. Mm -hmm. uh, what I need to do is to give him a sedation and make a little cut on his ear and see if we can actually pluck that and clot out. Okay. How do you feel about that? Well, if it's, yeah, if it's got to be done, mm. definitely I want to yeah, make sure he's, he's happy and healthy long term. So if it's going to affect him long term and he's going to lose that hearing, then yeah, ultimately I'd rather get on top of it now before it gets any worse. So. Yeah. Else. Good to go? Yeah. Let's go. Brian's had his operation, that's all gone really well, but the challenges are not over yet. Right, Brian. Come on, Brian. It's really important now we watch Brian very closely because if he vomits any food into the back of his throat and he can't swallow very well or he's got a very sore throat, he could aspirate food and water into his lungs and that can be life threatening. Back at the Bondi Clinic, Hugo the troublesome wallaby has been sedated in readiness for surgery on his ear. So Hugo isn't aware of his size, but Hugo likes to use his fists for bad reasons. Oh well, everyone likes a bad boy. Yeah, well he's that. Out in the waiting room, Hugo's keeper Ben is worried about his little mate. There's a lot of risks involved in sedating a wildlife species. I'm a little bit concerned, but it's got to be done. So yeah, I'm sure it'll be fine. Okay, I'll get all cleaned up myself and then get started. Yeah. Hopefully what this surgery achieves is to remove the blood clot that's in there and also bring those layers of skin back together and seal them against the cartilage of the ear. What I'm thinking is I'm really gonna have to bandage his ear just to stop that from happening. Okay, we are done. Let's wake him up. Now the procedure's all done. Hugo looks a million dollars. It's time to wake him up and get him home. What have you done? Now all the lovely lady wallabies will know who that hot piece of tail is. Liesl's decided that the feminine touch is really the key to Hugo's future. I'm not so sure. It stands for hot man with buttons, right? <laughs> I was going for Hugo, but yeah, that's the other interpretation, of course. Yep. Keeper Ben has been waiting patiently for news of Hugo. Yeah, definitely been watching the clock tick by. It's been almost an hour now and we haven't heard anything, so hopefully they'll be coming out soon with some, some good news, I hope. 
so. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> hey big boy. Here he is. How'd he go? Look, he went really well. Yeah. Yeah, he um he came through the operation brilliantly. Okay. So he's just waking up now. I've, I guess I've got him out to you a little bit earlier than we normally do. Yeah. Just so he is still a little bit sleepy when he goes home. For the trip home. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Big surprise to see his ear all wrapped up like that. I love the little touch with the H and that was very nice. And great, yeah, great relief just to hear that uh, the surgery went really well. I think we'll have to find him a girl one day. Turn this fighter into a lover. Alrighty. Thank you very much, Chris. Really Pleasure. appreciate it. No worries at all. He'll be fine. I'll let you know how he goes. It'll be great. And if we can see him in a couple of weeks for that, um, get those buttons back. All great. Right. Thank all you right. very much. Safe trip home, huh? Thank you. There's no doubt that Hugo goes home a lot more colourful than how he came in. But my hope is that he finds that special someone and his days of fighting are all over. There's a good fella. Sit down, Brian. That's a good boy. All right, mate, let's have a bit of a look over here before Mum comes to pick you up, all right? At Sash, Five-month-old bulldog Brian is showing no signs of having had a major throat operation. It has been a couple of days now since Brian's surgery. Um, he has recovered really well. What I'm going to do is just take a bit of a quick look over him and make sure that there aren't any problems that have developed uh, during his recovery and give him a final health check before he gets home to, to mum. Look down your throat. There's a good boy. A bit phlegmy, but not too bad. A couple of things that we were worried about with Brian was that he was going to get some swelling in the back of his throat or some bleeding after the surgery and thankfully none of that has happened and he's been able to recover smoothly and right to go home. Devoted owner Ali is hoping Brian's surgery will give the Bulldog a bright future. We're hoping that now that he's had the surgery he'll be able to breathe a lot better. And we're able to take him out for walks, like you want to see a dog that's active and happy and just have a better quality of life. Come on Brian, good boy. Brian, come on mate. Stops at the food stand on the way in. <laughs> it's lovely to see Brian and Ali reunited um, after a you know, worrying few days. Uh, but Brian's recovered really well and um, hopefully he'll continue to improve from here. <laughs> he always reciprocates the smooch, don't you? Come here. Already in Brian, like I can notice that his energy's better, his breathing heat's better, he just looks really bright and happy. So it's just nice to see that straight away. I didn't I didn't think it would be that um, quick. I've got some medications here for you to go home with, similar to what he's on before, so you just need to continue with those for the next few weeks yep. and then we'll gradually reduce some of his dependence on those drugs and, and then uh, hopefully he won't need them in the long term, which would be terrific. So and then he'll just be perfect. Yeah, he is perfect. <laughs> I know. You know, we're just so looking forward to having Brian at home and just seeing him happy, because we just want him to have a really good life and give him everything that he wants and just love him forever. So, yeah, we're excited that this will help him. Come on. See you, Brian. <laughs> so happy. He wants to go home. Brian has had a pretty tough few months. I mean, he's only five months old, but hopefully this is the beginning of a new future for Brian. All right, let's go home. Come on, good boy. Hi, I'm Dr. Danny Dusek from Bondi Vet. If you love our show and want to see more, plus some amazing content about pets and how to care for them, hit the subscribe button. Click that little notification bell and we'll see you on our next video.